Take your CJ7 all the way to 11. Jeepers with cool guys. So let's try taking off some things from the engine. Some big things off the engine. Uh, let's go with the intake manifold. I thought that would be kind of an interesting piece to get off. So to take the manifold off, uh, we're going to take the carburetor off first. I uh, looked around the thing and it looks like it's just four nuts that actually screw down into the intake manifold. And I think we need to disconnect these two screws, uh, throttle screws. And then we'll see if there's other interesting things to take off from that point. So let's start with the carburetor. These things are in a very tight space. Uh, there's not a lot of room there, so I don't know if you can actually get a socket in there. I, I can't. Uh, but one thing I do know is that it's 7 16 Even so, these things aren't on there very tight. So it doesn't seem to be all that hard to get off. To get to the back one here, probably going to have to disconnect a couple tubes. Um, definitely photograph this. Uh, PCV valve goes into the bottom uh, vacuum line here. Uh, and then I believe this is your choke. So you want to disconnect both of these tubes. And then get into this tiny little working space. Oh, this is going to be fun. This won't take like an hour and a half to get off. What I do, I know that this is not original, or at least this is, but the air filter isn't. The original air filter looks like the Millennium Falcon. It's this big black thing that comes over here and has an air um, connector to the front of the Jeep. But for all intents and purposes, once you take that off, which it just involves a couple bolts, or you take off your air filter, you can actually get a socket into an extended socket into these little areas, which is kind of nice. You can do the, the, the back ones with an extended wrench socket. All right, now that we've got the last of the four nuts off, let's connect these two springs. Let's connect this hose from the EGR valve. And... Yep, that's it. And there's your BBD Carter double-barreled or carburetor. And I know a lot of people hate these things. Other people think they're just fine. I have no intentions of changing it. All right, I guess then there's the, the mounting block. There again, another gasket underneath it. All right. Boy, that really opens things up, doesn't it? Be careful of the front um, vacuum line port. You don't want to take this across and wind up Knocking that thing. Ugh, wow. That was in there. Wait a minute. I'm going to have to take off the EG, v, EGR valve uh, because this vacuum port is actually going to hit into that. So take note of that. These are, from what I can tell, 9 16 So I thought they were 9 16 but they're actually a half. Well, they definitely did not design this to be taken off really easily. Too small for a socket. Unless you got really, really short sockets. That takes off the spring bracket. And then there's just a matter of popping that off. There's your EGR valve. Boy, that thing looks like it's uh, seen better days. Note to self, replace the EGR valve. And clean up all the stuff on the intake manifold. Boy, this is going to be an interesting fix. So now, we can take this guy off. Am I going the wrong way here? <laughs> I don't think so. It looks like it's brass. <laughs> yeah. Let's take off the coolant line. Lefty Lucy. Don't take these, um, like the CTO valve or the uh, temperature coolant, just yet, because there's pockets of um, antifreeze that are still hanging out in here. 
Uh, so if you undo that, you can have whatever that antifreeze left uh, spilling out onto your floor. You can take that, drain that out once you're done. But there is one last remaining nut or connecting piece, and this is, I believe, a air transfer, vacuum transfer between the intake and the uh, exhaust manifolds. Clean up in aisle three. Now, I believe, we take off the bolts that hold this thing into the actual block. And there's four across the top that serve dual purpose. They hold the intake and the exhaust in place. And it looks like there's one here, two, three, four. Might be a little bit more difficult to get to. I have to have an extended crescent wrench or an extended wrench socket to get to that. So let's start with the top four. Each one of these heads, the 9 sixteenths. They don't seem to be torqued in there all that hard. You can tell that was pretty easy to do. You, if you can get one of these uh, ratcheting uh, crests, or these ratcheting wrenches, you can just sink it or take it right up underneath the actual exhaust manifold um, and unscrew it that way. All right. This one's going to be a little bit harder to get to because you got the heater box or the, uh, the oven. Whatever they call it, the block oven, heating oven, kind of in the way. So this one might require a socket head to get to. So to get this one down here, this is almost the perfect configuration. If you had a just a three eighths connector to a 3 8 connector, just a short little extender, that might actually work too. But the angle in here kind of gets a little tight. But this seems to be about the right configuration for this one particular nut, this bolt. Right. While I was doing this, uh, I was noticing that there's some really cool lettering on here, numbering. It's got 84 on it. This is an 84 CJ7. It's got one, two, three, zero. I don't know exactly what that's for. And then uh, 1 through 0, 1 through 10 on here too. But it's got the serial number, uh, but then it's also got the firing order. Well, 153624. So if you can't remember what the firing order of your actual distributor is, it's right here for you. And these have got these uh, special locking washers. Not really washers, but more like locking pressure clamps. They go under the bolt. Nothing special about the bolt themselves. Now, in the efforts to take everything off of the manifold, or really, in all honesty, as I'm going through this, anything that I can get off of a piece before I actually take it off, I'm doing because I'm finding that a lot of this stuff is really hard to take off when it's a free uh, floating element. I can't remember what this thing actually is. Uh, it might be the coolant sensor, uh, sensor. Um, but who knows, we'll see. Well, there wasn't a whole lot on there. That was disappointing. This was one and a sixteenth, I believe. Yeah, I don't have a one and a sixteenth socket. I've got a one, I've got a one and an eighth. Apparently I need to get a one and a sixteenth. I don't know if that's even a sensor. It just looks like a bolt. It actually doesn't go down in anything. It doesn't. It doesn't go into. It's just a uh, closed-off port. Interesting. I wonder what that serves. There we go. All the stuff is off, disconnected. I think at that point we can just lift this thing off. And it's getting caught on this. Well, I'm finding that the threaded nut that goes from this pipe connects the exhaust manifold to the intake manifold is rusted, fused in there, and since I'm not exactly the most patient person on the face of the earth, I'm like, okay, well, let's just take off the exhaust manifold because that's just these four bolts here, or nuts, bolts, 
Uh, we've pretty much got everything else disconnected. I can't see anything else. And then that way we can drop the exhaust manifold out from underneath the intake manifold and then take the intake manifold off. Doesn't that sound like a great plan? Like I actually know what I'm doing? <laughs> okay, uh, so let's get on this and take that off. Not quite sure there was enough washers on here. Two regulars and a lock washer. Got a feeling that was probably not the original setup. Considering looking at all the other ones, they have this thick, almost like washer sleeve on it. I have to take a look and see if I can find one of those, because that ain't original. Oh, things are starting to fall off already. Look at that. Yeah, there you go. Huh, okay, so now that I've done that, I would say be very careful about taking this last bolt out because then at that point nothing is holding this in place. Pause for a second here. Okay, let's see if we can take off the manifold now. Oh, okay, well I guess we just needed to get that loosened up a little bit. So the, oh, oh, there you go, I just spilled antifreeze all over my foot. Well, there's truly nothing better than not being able to heed your own warnings. So there's the exhaust manifold, or the intake manifold. I mean, I'm sure that that's right. It just seems really strange that the thing would stick up or the top of that, like that, and hang out. Whatever. It does say top. Okay, so now, let's take off this last bolt. I wonder how heavy this thing is. That's not very heavy. You know, only up with one hand. And now, folks, for the big reveal. Oh yeah, nice big side of an engine. It almost looks like I'm betting they painted this with something and it just burned off, vaporized. Because this is actually like a pottery coating. Okay, let's take off this gasket, exhaust manifold gasket, uh, seems to be metal, or at least metal impregnated, split across the bottom, so that probably wasn't good. Yeah, alright. Well hey, there's your driver's side of your engine. There's the, uh, the actual serial number. H4, um, and then over here uh, you've got your date. Uh, I've got what looks like 01884, and then a lot of carbonization, dust, dirt. This is going to look so pretty when it's all cleaned up. All right, there you go. Just took off your exhaust manifold, just took off your intake manifold. And now you have an exposed side of your engine.